Yo, what's up everybody? This is Kobe Cheese with OnRPG.com. Going to be doing a review of a game right now in closed beta called Path of Exile. And if you haven't noticed already or heard about it, this is a game similar to that of Diablo 2 style hack and slash beat em up dungeon crawlers with the random uh, level element and you can have different characters with lots of different customization and crazy little things. So I'm just going to show you all the different stuff that makes this game actually unique and give you an idea of what you can expect if you do decide to play it and pick it up and, and what's different about this one than all of the other clones of Diablo 2 out there. One big thing that you'll notice as you begin playing the game is there's this actual giant huge like humongous skill tree with so many different options for customization that you can go down every time you level up you get to go one bracket further than you have gone before and usually it's just a bunch of passive stat boosts for your character things such as uh, reducing your cooldowns or giving you more critical strike and uh, depending on whether you go down the uh, the mage path or, or more of a warrior path or a uh, you know like a thief path you'll get stats that tailor to that particular class. So since I'm going down the witch path, of course, I'm gonna get more intelligence and mana and things like that for each stat point that I put in. And then I can go in different directions based on if I want to improve, say, my energy shield or my uh, cooldown usage, or if I wanna make my ice spells do more damage, or if I wanna do more damage with my wand. So there's all kinds of different ideas there that you can Kind of use in your favor all right so that's that's that one right there there's so much that you can go into um just just from that passive skill tree alone now the, the actual spells in this game work a whole lot different than you would expect as well so in order to use spells in this game you actually have to socket spell gems into your items so you don't passively learn skills or learn skills as you level up in fact the spells don't even level up with you um, they actually level up individually. So as you begin the game, you'll do a quest and the first reward is to get you one of your spell gems and you can choose from a few. And for example, on my witch, I chose this one that brings up like a pillar of ice. And you'll see, sometimes see that in the footage here where this little pillar of ice comes up from the ground and does quite a bit of damage and it's it's nice targetable long range. So the way it works is I put it in my item and as I kill monsters, I not only gain experience for my character, but the gem itself levels up. So let's say later on, if I wanted to trade that gem to somebody else, I could actually trade that gem to them and they would be able to use that leveled up gem. So I can see a lot of possibility in trading and like uh, grinding up spell gems and trading those off to people and I imagine as you find like rare spell gems and try and level those up that's gonna that's gonna add a whole new element to the game itself certain spell gems are of a different color so you may have a green one a blue one or a red one and you got to find items that actually accommodate that another thing is that some items may be linked together so like my boots here they have a blue gem and a green gem slot so some green gems may be able to augment a blue gem so it may say, um, you know, increases the effectiveness of socketed gem by 10% or something like that. Of course, at this point, I didn't have any of those, but that's just an example of what you would see is, uh, you know, certain augmentations. But of course, you have to have an item that goes with that. So there's all kinds of different things to think about in this game. As you level up, you have to have items that kind of work with your gems, and you have to have gems that work with your items and with your character and you have to level those up individually. It's a really neat concept and I, and I like how it, it works and, and so it gives you uh, a lot of options. Of course, early on in the game, I didn't have a lot of spell gems. There's a lot of open slots, but I can only imagine as you get into later in the acts and, and beat through the game, you're going to be able to unlock so many different spell gems and item combinations. And so there's gonna be a lot of customization with that alone as well, on top of the big giant skill tree that you are able to go down. Now. And I, when I was playing the closed beta, I didn't notice any kind of auction house or uh, any kind of crafting system. However, I'm sure that that is a possibility. Again, the game is definitely heavily in the works and kind of unwraps to the point. So, so they have a lot of changes that they're they're saying they're going to make to the game as far as the balance changes. Like a lot of the numbers may not be finalized from this footage here, but for the most part, you can get a good idea of what's going on. Some more things that are really interesting about this game that 
are different than another one is just the way the armor systems work. So I kind of wanted to talk about that. So different armor styles based on the champion you want to play, you can actually, if you wanted to, technically I can build my witch with like big, like heavy armor items. But of course I'm going to need a certain amount of strength and I have to go down that skill tree in order to get the amount of strength that I needed to wear those big heavy items. So instead I'm using just light cloth armor, but most of this armor that I'm wearing has a stat called energy shield on it. And if you look at my health bar on the bottom left, there's this little blue shield looking thing. And the way it works is if you've ever played Halo, where you can take a decent amount of damage, but then that damage won't actually regenerate, or that shield won't regenerate until you stop taking damage. That's the same way it works for the witch. So you don't actually ever lose health on the witch unless you're in a sustained battle and you keep taking damage. So the idea with, with this character is you don't want to actually get hit by monsters, at least not very much, and you want to try and avoid damage as much as possible, and then that way your energy shield works really well with her. So then the, some of the other classes, like the, uh, like I think it's not the Barbarian, but um, they have a few different classes which will be up in people's faces and just tanking damage. They're going to have those heavy armor items which actually reduce the amount of damage taken, but they won't have high energy shields or anything like that. And then there's other classes like the Thief or the, or the ones that are using the bows, and there are the ones that you're going to have the items that have high dodge percentage on them and possibly a mix of energy shield as well. I noticed some of the leather items have a tiny bit of energy shield and then a lot of dodge stats based on them because you're going to be in and out of fights. So that's kind of another cool concept that they've done with the different itemization in the game. Yet another new concept to the way items work in this genre is the way the actual potions work. In this game you have five potion slots and what you can do is you can actually find uh, different potion like flasks so you, you don't actually pick up new potions you just pick up a like a some type of flask like a medium health flask or something like that and the cool thing is that they regenerate based on killing monsters and they whenever you use them they use a certain amount of charges so my health potion may have 60 charges in it and every time I kill a monster, it regenerates one of those charges. But when I use it, it uses maybe 20 charges of that health potion. Another cool thing is that the health potions themselves, or the mana potions, whatever the case is, can have their own stats. So one of my favorite potions that I did find was a magical, uh, a magical flask that when I used it, it would make me run faster, like 20% faster for a few seconds. So I would, if I got hurt and I wanted to get away from battle, I would use that potion and run away and let my energy shield regenerate. So that was really cool. The battles were actually pretty fun and entertaining. Most of the monsters were fairly simple. If you got to like a boss, like the, the Act 1 boss was kind of difficult. She used a lot of abilities on you and slowed you a lot and you had to run away from her. There are some things about the game I don't like though. For example, they have a lot of like chests and dead corpses and if you remember playing from Diablo 2, you know there's always little things you can click on and, and open up, but for some reason it feels like the number of them in this game is just overwhelming to the point to where it feels like a chore to us like, man, there's all these little chests and things on the ground that I gotta go open up and maybe there's a cool item in it, maybe, uh, maybe there's not, so I'm like, man, that kind of feels weird. However, like I said, the game is still in kind of closed beta right now and they are working on it, so I'm sure they're gonna find a good balance for it. Overall, I think it's a nice game and I enjoyed playing it. I kind of look forward to checking it out whenever they do release more content. For example, right now you can go in Act 2, but they don't actually have all the quests in place. So um, definitely we'll be looking forward to checking this game out later. Hopefully they release it into open beta for all you guys to check out soon. But for now, if you wanna learn more about the game, be sure to be checking out on RPG as we will have more coverage on it in the future and you can also go to our boards at onrpg.com boards to discuss it with everybody else this is kobe cheese guys peace out